Okay, hello everybody. This is lesson eight, getting screen input inputs from the physical computing chapter. In this lesson, we learned about a couple new design elements, text inputs, drop downs, and sliders. And we're also introduced to the get text block and the get property blocks for getting inputs from the user. And then uh, we also use those in conjunction with set text and set property in order to change uh, different parts of the user interface. There is no circuit playground in this lesson. This is just about interacting with the user in order to get input from the user and then change the user interface based on that input. In the first level, we saw these new blocks in action in the how do you feel about dogs dialog. We looked at this, first looked at this little program for the, that allowed us to put our name in, select a favorite color, and then on a scale of one to three, move the slider to indicate how you feel about dogs. And when we hit save, it then outputs those responses to the page. <clears throat> if we zoom in on the text, you can see that we have uh, one event handler here, and that is tied to the save button. So when we click, have a click event on the save button element, we head into our event handler, and the first thing that happens is we define three variables, the name, color, and dog. So these are the three inputs we're going to be taking. We use the get text block in order to get the value or the, the text string from the name input element. And then we use the get property block to get the value of the value property of the color dropdown element and store it into the color variable. And then we declare our dog variable and use get property to get the value of the value property of the dog slider element, we store that again into the variable dog. So anytime you use the get property block, you have to use it in conjunction with a variable. You have to get the property, the value of a property from an element and with get property, and then you store that result into a variable for later use. So that's what we're doing here with the color uh, favorite color and how do you feel about dogs. Then when we use the set text block, we are setting the text of uh, an element, the name output element here, to the what we store to the variable name. So we take the text as an input stored in name and then we use that stored value for uh, to set the name output. So when we want to change the value of a property, uh, we use the set property block or the set property command, and it has three arguments. So we have to identify the design element that we want to deal with, in this case, the color output. The second argument is the property that we want to change, which in this case is the background color. And the third argument is going to be the value that we want to give that property that currently is stored in this variable. So we indicate our variable name here. So in this set property command, we are setting the value for the background color property of the color output element. Then we have three if statements depending on what uh, the value of dog is that we took from the, our slider. And depending on that value, we have one of three different set property commands, which is just writing a different icon or setting the different value to the image property of the dog image element. It gets a little confusing, uh, but what you need to remember is that get property is often used with set property. We get the information with get property and we set the information uh, with set property and the get property has only two arguments. That's the element ID that you want to get something from and the property that you want to get the value of. You store that into a variable and then with the set property, there's three arguments. 
The first is the element ID for the element you want to change. The second one is the property that you want to change. And the third is the value that you want to assign to that property. Okay, I'm going to move on. So, so setting get property and set property aside for a minute, the first skill builder was about get text and set text, which is a little easier, I think. There's fewer arguments for these. And we have an app that you the user enters their name and a room of the house. They click the button and it will set name that was entered on the welcome under welcome and the room number under you are in room and then output the temperature. So if we look at the code, we have an event handler for cl uh, the click event on the start button element that sends us in here. And the first thing we do is we declare our variable name and we store in that the, we use the get text block uh, on the name input element, that's this element up here, and that stores that text into our name variable. And then we use the set text block to set the name label element to the text that we've stored in our name variable. And the next thing we do then is we create another variable called room. We take the text from with get text from the room input element, that would be the second text box, store that into our variable, and then we use set text to set the room label that's here uh, to the text that's stored in the room variable. In our next skill builder, we got to use the get property and set property blocks in order to get a value from a dropdown and set the background color of our home screen. So we have an event handler for the click event on our start button, the, the update background button. And when we click that, we use get property to get the value of the value property of the color dropdown element and store it in the variable X that we've defined here. Then we use the set property block to write that value from that variable to the background color property of the home screen element. The next skill, bu skill builder was the same code but was just to show us that you can edit the drop down men the drop down menus in the design area. So if we switch to design mode, we can click the drop down and see we have our this is our color drop down and we have we can edit the options here to add whatever colors we want to give us more options. Uh, in the skill building five, six, and seven, we were working with sliders. So we first used the get value set value property uh, or block with uh, width and height sliders to change the emoji icon when we hit update. We then also used the input property on the slider. So we had instantaneous updates as you move the slider. They pointed out that you can change the max and minimum values of a slider in design mode down here. Finally, the practice. We got to make a pet scene creator that took values from a drop down if we wanted to have a dog in the bedroom, or maybe we wanted the cat in the bathroom or the pig in the fireplace. We practice taking input from the user and with the digital menu creator where we could enter a restaurant name, a special and a price. It's a pricey sandwich. And it would output sort of a little menu here. So that was Practicing with get text and set text. More practice with the get property, set property 
with sliders on the where are you from app. Remove the slider on the map. And then some debugging practice on the secret question app, which was a long one. Took me a while. I think that it was the thing that stumped me was the double equal sign here in the if statement. We don't want uh, the equality comparison operator. We want, I don't know, we wanted an equals instead of a double equals. So that brings us to the assessment. So this one had a little bit of everything. Isaac was creating an app that lets you set a custom profile to change background color, font size, output your name when you press the preview button. And we use the get text and set text blocks in this. We use the get property and set property blocks. We change some of the parameters of the design elements. Uh, like we include co different colors and set them in and max. So let's get started. First thing we're supposed to do is update the drop down menu so it includes at least four different colors. So we got to go over to design mode, click on our background drop down, and under options, we need four different colors red, orange, yellow, and green. It's not going to recognize yellow. Yeah, it will. Will it? No. Okay, the next thing we're supposed to do is update the slider so it's a minimum value of 12 and a maximum of 30. Back to design mode, select our slider. Minimum value 12, maximum value 30. Next thing is get a value from the text input drop down and slider, store in three variables. So, first, let's define a variable text, set that equal to, we're gonna use a get text block here, and that's going to be taken from the name input element. Don't forget the semicolon. If you're not sure what element that you're to or what the element's called, you know, you can always go over to design mode and design mode and click on that element and the ID is right there, name input. Next we're going to define another variable. That's going to be let's call it background drop down. We're going to set that equal to, we're going to use a get property here. And the element that we're grabbing the value from would be the BG drop down. And the property we want from that is the text. Where was it? I just saw it. Text. So that's going to store the text from the background dropdown into BG dropdown variable. And then we have one more, and that's going to be the font size from the slider. We'll call that the slider variable. And we're going to use another get property here. The element that we want is the size slider. The property that we're getting the value from is the value property. And we're storing that into slider. That should do it for declaring and assigning our variables. Then the next part is to update the text and properties of the preview label element. So this is the output part. So we're going to use a set text and two set property commands. We're going to set text of the preview label. That's the preview label is down here. This is the output and preview label element. And the text is going to be our TXT variable. We're going to drop that in there. Now the set property. The element ID is going to be preview label again, and that's going to be the same for all of these. And the property is background color. We're going to set the background color to the variable BG dropdown. BG dropdown. 
That should do it for that. And then the last set property command for the preview label. And this element is going to be the font size. And we're setting that to the value of our slider. I think that'll do it. Let's run it and see if Mr. Russell, who wants a yellow background and a large font, there it is. Okay, I think that's all for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.